All right, traders, it is time uh, for the much anticipated and much awaited 2022 performance review day by day, week by week, month by month over the last year, 2022 for our what is now called our ATM system, our asymmetric trade management. I think it's one of the most impressive results I've ever seen. So let's get into it. See what you think. All right, let's dive into this. Again, this is our results for our asymmetric trade management approach and system for the year of 2022. And as I said, I have just with all humility been absolutely blown away by what we've been able to accomplish, not just this year, but over the last several years of this program. It really has created some tremendous wealth, but it's done it in a way that is, I think, the most impressive part of this, um, the risk management aspect of it. So as we get into this, there's one thing that <clears throat> I want you to think about as I go through these performance numbers. And I know, again, it can be trite or it can be cliche uh, or it can be a much overused phrase. But I would like you to try to be open minded as we go through these scenarios and paint a picture of contrasting and comparing. because. Again, it's hard to know if something is impressive or not unless you have a control study to balance it off against, right? And so that's one of the two things here that I want to do in this video is I don't want to just present our results and show you how amazing, quote unquote amazing, I think that they are. I want to create a pretty impressive control study and basically balance it against the very top billionaire hedge fund traders in the world today. And you can sort of see where the chips fall and, and, and you can decide for yourself. But I would like you to keep an open mind. I don't know if we think a lot of times about an investing approach. You know, we know we, we, we know we need to invest. We know we need to set money aside for the future. We know that we're not going to work, hopefully, our entire lives and that we need our money to support us at some point. Uh, and so we invest because we have to. Um, but in terms of, I think, really believing that what we are doing on a day in and day out basis with our money really is changing our life, really is life changing. I don't know that we always buy into that. And I think that what we have here can actually accomplish that. So again, appreciate if you have an open mind as we look at it. So what is uh, the ATM program, the genesis of it? Where does it come from? Well, the idea behind this program, and again, you're, I, I might make a mistake here and call it the AST program. Uh, we used to just use the initials AST for the program uh, as an abbreviation for asymmetric. Um, but I do think we, we, we've sort of taken a vote in the uh, program with all of our subscribers and our members. And uh, the, the name and the acronym that seem to rise to the top for this new year is ATM. Uh, stands for asymmetric trade management, which is actually more descriptive and correct of what we do here. Plus, it's a pretty nifty acronym, ATM. So I might say AST here and there, but we're referring to the genesis of the ATM program, asymmetric trade management. So I've been a trader my whole life. I started out on Wall Street in 1987. And, uh, you know, there is a vast difference between the world of investing and the world of trading. It's always interesting to me that uh, you could trade the ticker symbol IBM and you could invest in the ticker symbol IBM. Same stock exchange, same brokerage account, uh, same ticker symbol, but very different approaches. Very, very different approaches. And trading is very distinct and different than investing. And I've always sort of aspired more to the trading side of the stock market than the investing side, which is great. But the, And I enjoy trading. But the problem is that any good trader will always tell you 
that position sizing and risk management and diversification are all keys to not going bankrupt as a trader. And so for us, we follow sort of the same principle in our trading room where we don't really want to put more than 10% of our overall portfolio in any one position. And then that 10%, we want to scale that in a little at a time, maybe no more than a third at a time. In some of our trades, it's one tenth at a time. So for a $100,000 portfolio, I would not want to allocate more than $10,000 into a trade strategy. And at most, I may start with 3000 of that $10,000. You know, I could start with maybe even as little as 1000 And so there's all these scenarios where, you know, maybe you're doing a zero day to expiration trade or something that has a really high profit potential and everybody gets excited and they're like, we made 10% on our money in just a couple of hours. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. But I made 10% on $3,000. That's $300 profit. What, what's happening with the other 97,000 that I've got sitting here in cash that's doing nothing, right? But that's how it is as a trader. You, you don't realistically have a way to diversify enough to put all of your capital into trading. So number one, we wanted something that we could say, you know what? It's scalable. So, I, you know, talking about position sizing, I don't care if you got seven figures. I don't care if you got eight figures. This is a scalable approach. You can put eight figures to work right away in this strategy. And number two, it's something that you would feel comfortable doing that with. And so that was the genesis of the ATM system. It really just very simply has a dual fold mandate. Number one, beat the S&P 500. And number two, do it at less risk. Now, we're going to spend some time here today talking about this less risk aspect. See, if you break these two mandates apart, in and of themselves, they're really not that challenging, right? Look, the market on average averages 12% a year. That's what it's averaged historically. We made 12%. T -t Today is January the 5th, Thursday, January the 5th. We made 12% today in our live trading room on a zero DTE NDX trade. We made in one, in, in a three hour segment, basically, we made today what the market makes on average in an entire year. Nobody is impressed with that. Okay. Nobody's impressed with that because we understand it's not a fair comparison. A day trade is much more risky than just passively putting your money into the SPY, for example, putting your money in the index, hands off, let it work for a year, right? So it's absolutely easy to beat the S&P 500. It's really, really tough to do it taking less risk. You can do it by taking more risk, but it's really hard to do it by taking less risk. Now, if that was the only focus, if we said, listen, we just want something that's really safe, right? And we don't care about beating the market. That's easy too. Let's go buy some CDs at your bank. They're FDIC insured. You're not going to lose money on those, right? So we can conversely, you know, we can beat the S&P. There's a lot of strategies that can beat the S&P, but they don't do it at less risk. There's a ton of ways to get less risk. In fact, there's a ton of ways to get zero risk, putting your money to work, but you ain't going to beat the S&P, right? So it is the dual fold mandate. It is the combination of both of these goals of not only beating the S&P 500 results on a yearly basis, but also doing it at less risk. Now, we met, when you say, how, how do you quantify less risk? We quantify less risk as uh, looking at the standard deviations and implied volatility. Okay, so we're looking we're, we're looking at uh, ratios like the sharp ratio, and we're looking at standard uh, deviations. How much volatility is being incurred on a daily basis in the stock market, and how much did our account fluctuate on the day? So if the market goes up and down by say two percent in a day, did did our account go up and down more than two percent or less than two percent? Okay. So that's the genesis. That's the idea behind the program. Dual fold mandate. Beat the S&P 500 
do it at less risk. Now, as I mentioned again, we used to refer to it as the AST program, it stands for asymmetric. Uh, we're, we're working on getting the nomenclature all changed for this year. So some of the website links, some of the, 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 the trainings that you're gonna see are still referring to AST. I'll probably mess up and call it AST as well. But just so you know, it is now we are referring it to as the ATM program, which again is a pretty catchy acronym, I gotta say, but it is more accurate as well, asymmetric trade management, okay? Now, we talked about the genesis of it. We talked about why we thought it was something that it was important to do. Um, there's another aspect to this as well. It's not really part of our dual fold mandate here, but it is important, and that is that a lot of people just don't like trading. They just don't want to sit in front of their computer all day long and trade. And so our ATM program takes basically five minutes a day. I talk to people, if not daily, at least weekly, through my Twitter or some other source where they find me online. And they say, I'd love to love to get involved in some of these results. I'd love to get involved in some of the, the this trading stuff, but just don't have time. Just don't have time. And folks, everybody's got five minutes a day to focus on building wealth. Everybody has five. How can you not have five minutes a day to build wealth? Well, I'm too busy working. Okay, so you're too busy working for a living to focus on getting wealthy? Now, that's, that's not a time issue. That's a prioritization issue, right? So we wanted to build something that at maximum takes five minutes a day. We had a day um, a few weeks ago where we had about 15 alterations to the portfolio and it took like nine minutes and everybody in the program was like, oh my gosh, it took me all day long. I'm like, it took you nine minutes. But generally speaking, it's gonna take about five minutes a day to monitor your portfolio and then you're done. Yeah, that, that five minutes in the morning, market opens up, you're done, you close your laptop, you walk away. You don't look at your account again until the next morning. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Well, again, number one here, it, it, it is investing and it's not trading. So this is, uh, uh, this is a big point to make. This is very, very passive in nature. This is absolutely passive in nature. This is not uh, about getting in their accounts and trading all day long and buying and selling and buying and selling. Five minutes a day, Set your set your your uh, alter alterations to your allocations of your portfolio. And you're on your way. Okay, uh, it does work for IRAs and non IRA accounts. There are some changes and stipulations with how to structure these trades with IRAs. I will say here, this is not a ATM training video. This is not a video about how we structure these trades how we put them together, how we find the research to set them up, how we build our asset allocation model. That is a video that's coming here shortly, a training video. This video is just about the performance of the program and a little bit of the highlights of how it works and what it's intending to do, okay? Uh, but it does work for IRAs and non-IRA accounts. Again, it takes five minutes a day to make generally one to 10 portfolio adjustments. Sometimes we have none. We do have a few days where we have none. Sometimes we have days where we have 12 to 15, but really about one to 10 adjustments a day. It takes about five minutes to get those done, okay? It's not trading. We're not in there trading all day long. We're not watching the account. We're not monitoring it. You set your trades in the morning, put your five minutes in, you close your laptop, you walk away, you're done for the day, okay? We talked about the dual fold mandate, and it is it is the dual fold part of it, right? It's not just trying to beat the market. That, that That's a big goal in and of itself. When I was on Wall Street, everybody that I saw on Wall Street that was getting the big bonuses wasn't because they were nice people, it was because they were beating indexes. They were beating the index, they were getting performance bonuses. So it is about beating the market, but it's also about doing it at less risk, okay? Uh, I will just quickly tell you, 2021, 2021, uh, we, we, we came in with about 72% less risk than the S&P 500. Now again, we measure risk based off of the Sharpe ratio and standard deviation. Okay, 2022 was a little bit of a tougher year. We came in at about 48% less 
risk. Meaning if the if the stock market dropped by 2% in a day, maybe we dropped by 1%. We are about half of the volatility of the stock market. So again, if you're wanting a place to put your life savings, what's important to you? Well, yeah, you want to do well. You want to do well, but it's probably this that is your primary focus, right? Results are tracked based on our net liquidation values, our daily net liquidation values. So we use a lot of metrics to judge and track our performance in our live trading room with loss ratios. You know, how many trades did we do that were winners? How many trades did we do that were losers? What was our max profit potential? What was our max loss amount? What was our biggest drawdown? What is the average ROI per trade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we don't track any of that in, in, in the ATM program. We don't track any of it. The only thing we look at is our net liquidation value. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, are our account values going up, staying the same, or going down, okay? Because ultimately, I think at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Uh, we, we talk a lot in our trading programs about gestalt. It is a German word. Our German members have said we are using it completely incorrectly. But for trading, what gestalt means is that the sum is greater than the individual parts. And we don't really care if one individual trade is working or not. What we care about is the overall portfolio. And is it going up in value or going down in value? Okay, so that's our sort of approach to it. We do use a hedge fund aspect to the asset allocation, meaning that we will hold short and long positions. That's why, from a very, very selfish standpoint, uh, I, I was very excited that 2022 was a bear market uh, and a, b b because it gives us an edge. Obviously, if you are a passive investor, buying, holding stuff in a bear market, you're not gonna make any money, right? The market's going down, you're losing money. For us, it's amazing, it's mana from heaven. Uh, it, it is just absolutely fantastic. It gives us a ability to stretch out that first mandate, which is beat the market return. If the market can go down by 1% in a day, and we can make 1% in a day, that differential over an entire year really adds up. It really becomes impressive. So uh, we are sort of a hedge fund approach in that aspect that we do hold short positions. We love when stuff is going down. So we hold short and long positions. The key to this, you say, how, how, how can you beat the market and do it at less risk? The key is right here non-equity correlation. We love the saying uncorrelated strategies in uncorrelated markets. Another easy way to, that I like to use that or say that is we like to trade things that are in the market but not of the market. There's a whole list that I'm going to give you here of things that we trade that are non-equity correlated. Now the easiest example is probably bonds, right? Money doesn't usually just evaporate it moves from one place to another. And so when stocks are ugly, when stocks are scary, when the market is going down, money is being pulled out of equities, it usually needs to go someplace and it flows into bonds. So you have this negative correlation of when the, the bond market is going up, stocks are going down. When stocks are going down, bond market's going up and, and, and vice versa. And those are two non-correlated markets, right? Well, there's all kinds of non-equity correlated markets. There's all kinds of things that trade on the stock exchanges that are in the market, but they're not of the market. If the Dow tanks by 800 points in a day, it's not going to affect the price of coal, right? And we trade coal. So uh, again, non-correlated asset allocation models, it's kind of our secret sauce here, okay? We do have four main strategy components. We will short things. With generating cash flow by selling puts against them, we will go long items and generate cash flow from them selling covered calls. We sell credit strangles to, number one, generate income in the portfolio, but also the credit strangles help us initiate these 
number one and number two items right here. We use a credit strangle to get short a position. We use a credit strangle to get long a position. Okay, so the credit strangles are really the starting or the genesis point of this program. They really are the key to a lot of our success. And then last but not least, the number four type of position that we trade, which we have one on right now in our portfolio, are what we call anchor positions. And these are basically synthetic long or synthetic short positions using a leap option, long-term equity anticipation security. These are 12 month or longer dated options that are long. We purchase them at about an 80 delta and we sell covered right positions against them. And they work again as a synthetic long or as a synthetic short position. And we generate cash flow with them by covering them, covering the long leap calls with calls, selling calls or long leap puts with selling puts. So. That's sort of the overview of the program. Now, we talked about this non-equity correlation, you know, trading uncorrelated strategies in uncorrelated markets. Well, we trade a bunch of them. This is not by any stretch of the imagination a definitive list, but we trade crypto. Now, again, before you look at any of these, you're like, oh, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Remember, <laughs> we trade to the short side as well as the long side. So we don't really care if something's going down. We have just as much opportunity, if not more, some cases, to make money as things are going down versus things going up. So we trade crypto, we trade natural gas, we trade oil and silver and bonds and copper and coal and uranium and lithium and coffee. All of these things trade in the stock market but not are, up, are not of the market. They don't necessarily move up and down with the indices, okay? We do trade some of the major US indices. We trade the IWM, which is the ETF for the Russell. And we trade the SPY, which of course is the S&P 500. We also trade a lot of foreign indices. We trade the India market, the, the Brazil, uh, Chile, the Eurozone, Saudi Arabia, Turkey. So we are as absolutely diversified in this program as you can possibly be. Diversification is not about spreading your money around. That, that's that that's diversification isn't having 40 positions on in the portfolio diversification is having non correlated items having things in your portfolio so that when one goes up uh, or when one goes down another one goes up and vice versa okay they balance each other out that's how you get a good sharp ratio that's how you get a low standard deviation that's how you do this taking on less risk than the S&P 500, okay? All right, let's get into the performance update here. And you can get a little bit of an idea of where we're at. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've held you off long enough here, but let's just put it this way. The, the results are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. Um, I am a person that is rarely happy with myself, rarely satisfied. I always feel like I am living a life that is just a little bit short of what my actual potential is. Uh, and so I'm just kind of perennially just, you know, feeling a little bit like I've fallen short in whatever it is that I'm working on. I have to say that the ATM program, uh, the, the, the asymmetric trading management approach to investing has just been amazing. It really has been a performance result that we are we were, we're just thrilled with okay so without further ado how did we do well here's our results for not only last year 2022 but also 2021 uh you can see this is the results here this chart is for 2022 um the asymmetric trade management approach made 22.4 percent roi on the year while the S&P lost 19.85%, okay? So this uh, orange line right here, you can see is uh, the, the ATM or what was referred to as uh, AST. It's the ATM program. Uh, and the blue line is the, the S&P, okay? Uh, so to say that we just trounced the market, I don't think is, is fair. I think we did better than that. Um, this isn't about just beating the market. This is about absolutely annihilating the market. We didn't make a little bit more than the market. The market was in a free fall most of the year. The market was in a bearish market. This is the worst market right here. Worst market 
since 2008, which was the financial crisis that was basically the financial crisis to end all financial crises. It was the one of the worst crash. The 2008 crash was worse than the 1929 crash. This is pretty much the worst market we've seen in our lives, in our history. And uh, this past year was second to that. It, it hasn't had a market like this since 2008. And we crushed it. We absolutely crushed it. Now, 2021, I just want to point this out real quickly as well. 2021, our ATM program returned 54.5% ROI, almost 55% return in 2021. And the S&P did almost 27%. Okay. So these last to, you, you guys know that uh, past performance is not any guarantee of future results, right? It's the disclaimer that comes in all of the mutual fund prospectuses. But I will say that we're in a nice situation here where we're looking at two years of past data relative to what the market did in that period of time. Because 2021, solid bull market, not a lot of drawdowns, not a lot of risk, um, for us as investors, there was not a lot of premium to be had. It was a great year for the market. It was tough for us. And you might say, how on earth are you going to beat a market? That, yeah, I get it. You know, beating a market that is going down. My goodness, we could have put all of our money in cash. We could have put all of our money in cash in 2022 and beat the market. Right. Uh, so I get that, but how do you beat a market that is a bull market that is amazing? Well, we didn't just barely do it. We crushed it. We absolutely crushed the market when it was going up. And I think from a percentage standpoint, we actually did better this year. We actually did better this year than we did last year. So for us, it's like, uh, we don't care. We don't care if, if this is the worst market since the financial crisis of 08. We don't care if it's an amazing bull market. We don't care. We have a strategy and approach to cover all of those bases. So the results have been absolutely astounding. But as I said earlier, it doesn't really mean anything unless you have a control study to compare that against. So I did say also, I want to get into the nitty gritty numbers of each uh, uh, of each month's results. You can see here, this is 2021. This is two years ago. This is the S&P 500. And this is what again was called the AST program. It's now ATM. Uh, and you can see here that we had a, a losing month right there. And uh, we had a teeny losing month right there. Okay. Market had a, a losing month right there, it had a losing month right there, uh, almost had a break even right there, uh, and had a losing month right there. So overall, we absolutely, of course, we just crushed the market there, 54.5%. Uh, but you know what? The market did pretty darn good for 2021. Almost 27% total gain on the marketplace. What does that mean? You know, relative to what is 26.9% good or not? Well. There's the results for the market in 2021. These were the top hedge funds for the year. These were all of the top hedge funds for the year. Two of these market, uh, excuse me, two of these hedge funds beat the S&P 500. Only one of them beat us. One hedge fund in 2021 beat our results. I think that's pretty I think that's pretty impressive. Okay? Now, we talk about the rule of 72 a lot in our trading room rule of 72, you just take the interest rate that you're earning, you divide it into the number 72, it'll tell you how long it takes to double your money, right? So, obviously at 10%, if you divide 10 into 72, you get 7.2. If you're earning 10% a year, your account doubles every 7.2 years. If you're earning 30% a year, your account doubles about every 2.4 years. Here's a powerful statistic. You only need to double $2,000 nine times 
to turn it into a million dollars. What does that mean? Well, number one, it means that everybody has enough money to become a millionaire. You can make $180 a month donating plasma. So if you are unemployed, you can come up with two grand to get started investing, right? Anybody can do that. Uh, so number one, it takes not a ton of money. Like people, oh, I got to start off with a million to make a bunch of money. No, you don't. You start off with a few thousand dollars. Number two, though, you've, you've got to do something like this. You've got to do something like that. You can't be doing something <clears throat> that's going to take you 24 years to double your $2,000 to $4,000, right? It's just not going to work. So the power of compounding, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Now, if you look at that, this kind of illustrates, I think, how important those numbers are. You say, what, 20, you know, 27% from the market in 2021, that's pretty good. Does it really matter? Well, at, at the market's return for 2021, 26.89%, your account is going to take 2.68 years to double. Okay. At, at a 54%, our rate of return right down here, it's 1.3 years. 2.6 years. 1.3 years. You decide how quickly you want to be doubling your account values. Okay. Doesn't mean there's a guaranteed or implicit uh, uh, guarantee there that, that you we're going to make 50% a year every year. But we've done a pretty good job up to, to this point of our dual fold mandate, beating the market at whatever it is going to do. We don't know what the market's going to do. We just want to beat it and doing it at less risk. Okay. 2022 results, we, we, we talked about this a little bit. The 2021 results, absolutely phenomenal. 2022 results, 22.4% ROI on the year versus an almost 20% loss in the market. Now, that means if we had $100,000 in the S&P 500, at the end of 20, at the start at January 1st, 2020, uh, 2022, by December 31st of 2022, our account was down to $80,150 versus if you were in the ATM approach, that $100,000 is now worth $122,400. Now that's a $42,000 difference on a $100,000 account. That's a 44% difference. That's a $42,000 different performance on a $100,000 account. We're not talking about peanuts here. This is a 77% return for two years. Really, really happy with those results, okay? Now, let's jump in and let's go to the daily spreadsheets, okay? Let's go through these numbers. I'm gonna get into these in detail here. We're gonna look at these spreadsheets. You can, I'm gonna go uh, somewhat slow through it so that you can see it month by month by month. If you wanna fast forward through this part of the video, but I wanna be completely transparent in our results. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is keep an eye out on this right here that 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 big drawdown that we took here at the end of January okay so keep an eye on that let's jump into the uh, spreadsheets and see what they tell us okay so let's go ahead and jump in here and first of all I want to give a big thanks and gratitude out to Ron one of our members in our trading society uh, who is sort of the, uh, the, the, the the bearer of the spreadsheet. He, he keeps track of all of our daily results. So you can see my Netlick value here. You can see uh, my daily results over here. You can see the P&L. You can see, you know, in red is a loss, in, in black is a, is a win, okay? Anything that is highlighted, anything that is uh, in, in yellow is a new portfolio all-time high. I want to talk about that in as we end up this video new all-time high so I'm gonna to try to go slow through this and again if you 
are not interested in this, you can fast forward the video. Otherwise, you can stop it and pause if you hit a certain month or date that you're interested in and want to see. But here's my my daily P&Ls. And I want to just go down through these daily P&Ls. I'll focus on that part more than anything uh, as we go down these. And, and you can see here, uh, again, over here as I'm, I'm, I'm working through this, you can see right in here. Right in here. See that? The, see, see this result right here for this week? Down almost ten thousand dollars. This is the result that I that I wanted to illustrate for you guys right here. Okay, down almost ten thousand dollars. That was that gap down there uh, at the the uh, in that February that late January February period where it really set us back performance wise. What happened there? That was me. That was me messing up. Uh, I am human. I do make mistakes. And we used a spread. Uh, we used a strategy in here, which was a spread, which is very appropriate and used almost daily in our live trade room. It does not meet the risk parameters of the ATM program. And I put a trade in a portfolio allocation that where it shouldn't have been. This should have never happened. That should have absolutely never happened. But it, it did, and I take responsibility for that. And that took us two months to work our way back from that. Uh, it set us down to where we were down at, a, at our portfolio low for the year after that. It took us a while to dig out of that hole. But as time went on, you can see we start to build. Again, you can see the netlick value here. The netlick value starts to build and build and build and build. We start to build quite a bit of consistency you know that we're fairly consistent <clears throat> when we finally get to the point that we're hitting all-time highs okay um, and you know this is interesting right here this uh, for, for uh, this particular period of time right here we had eight wins 13 losses we will take losses all day long in this portfolio because we don't want the risk so we will anything has even the whiff of a of, of, of a scary situation, we we pull the trade. We we get out of the trade. Because again, dual fold mandate, we want to not only beat the market, we want to do it at less risk. Okay. So you, again, watch the net like value here. You can see that it just keeps rising and rising and rising. Rising and rising and rising. We finally get back to where we are not just at an all-time high for the month, but we are at all-time highs for the portfolio. Um, but it took us a, a while, uh, September of, of last year, after that bad month of losing 9%. Uh, but again, all-time high after all-time high. And we ultimately get down to, again, you can pause the video if you want to watch any or look at any of these specific days. Ultimately get down to the very, very end of the year. And what, what do you know it? <clears throat> We finished at the all-time high uh, for our portfolio. That's not planned. Doesn't always work out that way. But I do want to reference that in just a moment. So that's a, a quick overview of every single day in the year of 2022. Now, here, here, here's the frustrating part about that. As I said, it's the woulda, coulda, shouldas. Our 22.4% was amazing. We crushed the market. Could have been 31% if I and, and and it wasn't about oh you know we, we this isn't hindsight trading this isn't if you would have done this and said no it's just if I would not have put the wrong trade in the wrong portfolio where we uh, breached our risk parameters we would have been at 31%. So it's a lesson learned. It hasn't happened before. It won't happen afterwards. I don't think unless I really screw up again. But it has been a fantastic result, all-time high. Uh, we finished the year at an all-time high. Now, you can't time that. You can't. Whoops! You can't time that. You you, you can't guarantee that that's going to happen. But I think it does point to the consistency of this program that we were able to finish the year, last day of trading of the year and our account had never been higher all year long. Uh, very, very consistent profits. 
uh, day after day, week after week, month after month. Okay, pretty happy about that. Now, again, I said that uh, none of this means anything if we don't have a direct control study or something to compare it to. So I want to compare it to some of the top hedge funds this year, just like I did with 2021. John Paulson, uh, during my time on Wall Street, he was the big wig on Wall Street. He was the guy, uh, sort of uh, the man, the myth, the legend. He is a billionaire. He's worth $5 billion. Uh, one of his claims to fame is he also, uh, like another person we're going to mention here, bet pretty big in 2007 against the mortgage market and made a ton of money there. But he's a, he's a, he's a, he's an icon on Wall Street. There's his result for last year. Okay? That that's his that's his portfolio result right there versus uh, the average hedge fund and versus the S&P 500. So, not a great year for John Paulson. We crushed his results. Carl Icahn, um Carl Icahn is is a legend. He is a living legend. Um, just insanely smart. He is incredibly smart. He's a billionaire. He's worth five billion dollars. Um, or excuse me, he's worth uh, closer to twelve billion dollars. Uh, he has Carl Icahn's fame. Claim to fame is that he has one of the longest streaks on Wall Street of successful outperformance. Every once in a while, some hedge fund manager will hit it out of the park, you know, for six months or a year, or maybe even two years. Carl Icahn's been doing it for decades. So the guy's just super smart, one of the most successful track records on Wall Street. Um, he's worth a ton of money, and he did well. He did well in 2022. He's one of the few portfolio managers that was able to bring in a positive result, but yet it did not beat our results. Did well. He did well, but he didn't beat us. Okay. Um, George Soros. Uh, George Soros is a horrible human being. Um, he is uh, he is a horrible human being. Uh, he has probably done more than maybe any other person that I know to destabilize democracy. Um, he's a socialist. Uh, I don't like him. If you can't tell, as a, an individual, as a human being, I don't. I don't particularly admire him at all. Um, but he is, you know, tremendously successful. He's worth seven billion dollars. He's a billionaire now. George's claim to fame and what he is known for is uh, in uh, 1992 he put a huge short position on against the British pound. And in one day, he broke the Bank of England. He is referred to as the man that broke the Bank of England. He bankrupted the Bank of England. He made $1 billion in one day. It is a record that still stands. This was, this was 1992. This is a record that still stands to this day. I don't think there's another trader that has made more than a billion dollars in one single day. And George Soros did it. Okay, so that's that's his claim to fame. Um, he is a swing for the fences type of investor, and man, you, you you see that here. His last year was horrendous, just just horrendous. Very befitting of a man of his ilk, I will say. <laughs> I don't really like George. Uh, now, as much as I hate George Soros, here's Warren Buffett. Uh, Warren Buffett, for a very very long time, was the wealthiest man in the world. He's no longer the wealthiest man in the world, but he's in the top five still. Um, he is known as the investing legend. He is generally considered to be the uh, most successful investor that's ever lived. So, you know, if, if, if that's what you're known as, uh, you're, you're probably pretty good at what you do. I think we would all agree that Warren Buffett is pretty darn good at what he does. He's worth $110 billion now, but uh, that's because he's given away a ton of his assets. Um, just uh, seems like, I, this might surprise you, I don't personally know him. So uh, it's just from what I have heard or seen, but he seems like a really awesome person. Um, he's incredibly humble, which I find a ton of value in. Um, and uh, again, we were able to beat his results. Now, Here's an interesting aside. This comes from Warren Buffett himself. He has said many, many times 
that he's never, ever going to uh, return the performances that he did in the past. Because the law of large numbers is hurting him. He has too much money to manage. And, you know, for him to put $10 million in a microcap stock, that's not going to move the needle for him. He needs to be making billion dollar investments. There's only a few places you can put billions of dollars at a time. So he said many times that if he could start over with $100,000, he could immediately replicate his earlier year's results, but that he'll never be able to do it now. So it is kind of nice that it comes right from Warren Buffett's mouth that we actually are in a position to have an edge or an advantage over him at, at this point. So I like that. Uh, David Tepper, I, I don't know a lot about David Tepper. He is a, a, a hedge fund manager. He's worth like $18 billion. He owns the, the Carolina Panthers, so he likes football. This is what billionaires do. If you like a sport, you go buy a, a, an NFL team. Um, but he's been pretty darn successful over time. Um, he's considered fairly forward thinking. He can kind of see things before they happen. Uh, but yet again, he, he didn't beat us this year. He's down 11.39% on the year. Now, Michael Burry, this is a guy whose reputation precedes him, obviously. Um, what, 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 what can you say about Michael Burry? When you have a movie that is made about you uh, and your amazing investment acumen, <laughs> I, I mean, I think that that says it all, right? Uh, the guy is uh, pretty smart. He's a hedge fund manager and a physician. So he's pretty sharp. He, he's pretty smart. He's crazy, crazy smart. He's super accurate on forecasting. He has forecasting models that are really, really impressive. And I will say that of all of the crop of, uh, you know, there's his three-year performance track record. Of all of the crop of current hedge fund managers, he has probably one of the most stellar results. He's really good. Um, uh, obviously, the big short movie was made about him shorting the, the mortgage markets. Uh, but yet again, his one-year performance lacked ours. Uh, we were able to, to beat him uh, this past year. Uh, Daniel Loeb, um, I've never been embarrassed to say that I kind of have a man crush on Daniel Loeb. My career on Wall Street did not last or go, uh, it did not go the way I wanted it to. It did not last as long as I would have wanted it to. Uh, if you were to ask me what a perfect career trajectory on Wall Street would look like, it would be Daniel Loeb. If you're into comic books, Daniel Loeb would probably be Superman. In, in my opinion, I think he's just awesome. I think he's amazing. Uh, and he's very humble. I, I value that. Um, he's really big into charity. He and his wife are big into supporting charities. Um, he's a sharp, sharp guy. And he is very well respected on Wall Street. He's very, he's held in very, very high regard. And that's not an easy crowd uh, to, to, to build a reputation in and get respect out of. Uh, but yet again, his one-year performance from last year was not uh, comparable to ours. Okay, uh, Ray Dalio, I had to put Ray Dalio on here because Ray Dalio uh, is the hedge fund manager for the largest hedge fund in the world. So the guy runs the largest hedge fund in the world. He's worth $19 billion dollars. Um, he has a book out called Principles. It's just the website principles.com. It's a good book. I would recommend that you get it. Uh, and it just talks about how to create your own principles to govern your life and your trading from your work life, your personal life, etc. cetera. Um, but yet again, he, he, he was not able to make any money in 2022 and, and was not able to beat us as well. Okay. Um, Kathy Wood. Some of you may be laughing right now as I put up Kathy Wood, but you know it was just two short years ago that she was a rock star and everybody thought she was amazing. Uh, and of course, she has blown herself up once again. So my hero on Wall Street, the man that I probably respect, admire, look up to more than anybody, Dan Loeb, uh, just recently was in an interview and asked about Kathy Woods. And he said, um, 
she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Uh, and one of the things that he said was, and this is helpful for us as investors, is, you know, when, when, when I left Wall Street and I started to build my financial planning practice, I was hiring financial planners for the first time. I never hired anybody. One of the best questions that I learned was, you know, why are you and I talking right now? Why, why are you here looking for a position? Are you running from past failures or moving toward future successes? You know, why are you here? Well, Kathy Wood has made a history of running from uh, garbage dump fires. She has blown up two previous hedge funds. She's on her third now. Looks like this one's pretty much blown up as well. And, and Dan Loeb just simply said, you've got to be better than stock picker. You've got to be able to manage risk. And she doesn't have the risk management component for whatever reason. That's why... We have a dual full purpose in this program. We'd love to beat the market. It's great that we've beaten the market the last couple of years. I honestly don't care if we don't. What I care about is that we take less risk. I care that we manage the risk aspect of all of this. Um, so anyway, she, by the way, is not a billionaire, <laughs> but she is worth $150 million. So if you can imagine somebody that lost... They pretty much blew up their account this year. If you can imagine uh, that that is a person that over the last three years has lost you basically 30% a year. is still worth $150 million. That tells you how warped Wall Street is. But again, got to be careful what you do with your money, where you put it. Bill Aikman, I'll just finish with Bill Aikman. I don't know a lot about Bill Aikman. I'm not a big fan of his because, as I said, I value humility. He is not a humility, humil humil does not have humility in his life. Um, he is a billionaire. He does swing for the fences on his trade. So you do tend to see a little bit of erratic behavior in his portfolio. But his, his, his portfolio is no higher at the end of 2022 than it was in 2014. Eight years of no growth. Eight years of no growth. You know, uh, I do know that Bill Aikman has gone up against uh, the titan of uh, Wall Street, Carl Icahn, several times on trades. Bill's taken a short position, Carl's taken a long position, and Carl Icahn has crushed him in every single one of those situations. So, uh, if I had to pick a tetherball team, I would probably pick Carl Icahn over Bill Aikman. But again, he's a guy that is considered an expert. He's on CNBC every week. He is on. This is a guy that hasn't made any money since 2014. He's on CNBC every week as their expert commentator. So again, not doing that well. The other thing too, guys, that I want to talk about a little bit with the ATM program is the cost structure. Two and twenties are what hedge funds work off of. You pay them a two percent asset fee, and they take twenty percent of all the profits on top of it. Those days need to be over, folks. We have very strong cost efficiency in our trades. The way we set up our trades, the way we manage our trades, cost efficiency is very important to us. Most ETFs or mutual funds are going to have a three and a three point six percent a year hard and soft cost. Now, people will say, "I'm in a mutual fund." It's only got nine tenths of 1% management fee. That's the hard cost. That's not the soft cost. The soft costs you don't see. Soft costs are trading fees, commission fees, overhead fees, paying for the building that they work out of. All of those fees have to come out of the profits of the portfolios. Okay. So on a hundred thousand dollar portfolio, on average, you're going to be paying about $3,600 a year in fees. The AST program is $1,500 a year or $125 a month if you're on the annual plan. That's a $2,100 a year savings just on the fee structure. What can $2,100 do? Well, if you if you pay, take $2,100 a year and you set it aside every year and you do it for 10 years and you make 24% a year, it's hundred grand. So on a $100,000 dollar portfolio, you could save a hundred grand, potentially, in 10 years. A hundred grand is a hundred grand. It adds up. 
Okay. So uh, I, again, guys, uh, the, the, the asymmetric trade management system, it's been fantastic for us. It's, I don't know what else you can compare it to. We have absolutely just been crushing it with this. Um, if you do want to try it for yourself, you can go to the try it. The website's still AST, so don't get confused, but you can still go to, you can go to try AST for free dot com and we'll give you a two week free trial you could come into the program get inside of our server talk with all of the hundreds of members that are already in there and say i just saw scott's video is that real was those, were those really the results that you guys have been getting ask them uh you got two weeks for free to come in and check it out if you have an investing portfolio right now seriously what are you doing that's better than this <laughs> Come check it out. I really, really, really do think that it can be life changing. I think it, that if, if you can realistically look at a way that you feel has a high probability of bringing in a million or two million or five million dollars, whatever it is, over your time frame and your starting balance, I think it can be life changing. So. Come check it out. Again, you can take a look at that. Uh, it, it is really about compounding your money. The rule of 72, the rule of 115, that tells you how long it takes you to triple your money. So come check it out. You can go to the website, tryastforfree.com. We'll give you a two weeks free trial. You and I can have a, a, a free one-on-one -on -one Zoom session. I will go through and answer any questions that you have on the program. That's been our overview for performance. We will do some training videos here coming up in the next few weeks on how the program actually works. Thanks, guys.